Hey everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Hey, I'm here to talk about using Adafruit's 12 key capacitive touch sensor board, number 1982, um, to sense water levels. I want to put it in context and that's why I'm starting here with my big fish tank. This is my 135 gallon fish tank with my African cichlids. Um, you can see they're beautiful and colorful, but do require some maintenance. I'm going to talk about the the whole spectrum, the whole breadth of the project in a future video, but I did want to talk about um, being able to sense water level using this, um, this capacitive touch sensor board from Adafruit. The videos that follow I captured as I was uh, broadcasting live on my Twitch channel, uh, basement underscore tech. Um, so just to put those a little bit in context, I wanted to provide uh, the following. So you saw the big tank and uh, you might remember in a prior video, we were back here when my water level sensor went off and reminded me I forgot to shut the valve. Well, that's part of the reason for this project. This is called a refugium. Basically the water from the big tank enters on the left, gets filtered through those plants and exits using that pump on the right. Well, it turns out this, the, um, the portion of this uh, refugium on the right um, actually mimics the water level in the entire system. So I'm going to use the capacitive water level sensor to sense the level in this section for two reasons. One, to um, refill water that evaporates, and secondly, to actually intentionally pump water out and replace it with fresh water. That's called a water change in the aquarium business. Again, you might remember up here, you saw this um, electrically controlled water valve, the thing behind the red box that will be used to control the water going back in. So you start to imagine if I can sense the level, put water back in, um, control it in a smart way, I can start to automate some of these um, large aquarium maintenance tasks. So you can get an idea again of the macro picture. We have these copper sensors um, here about every inch and a half. There's six of them, so that's half the capacity of the board. Um, and um, what I'm trying to do is sense these the water level so that I can control pumps. This is a prototype. Um, I'll make a video uh, later where I show the actual system in which I'm going to implement this, but this is an easy way, well somewhat easy, a lot of machinery here, somewhat easy way to um, to just demonstrate the concept. So let me flip back. Now um, I'm going to uh, turn the pump on that moves the water from the right, the full section, to the left. So we're going to be going down from 12 to 11 down the sensors in that direction. And um, first time I've done this today, but I did it yesterday, so hopefully the results are repeatable and um, you'll get the idea that it's behaving way more rationally today than yesterday. Um, yesterday we got pretty far, um, but there were some mysteries to figure out and I'm um, happy to say got most of those uh, solved and one more experiment to run today. Let me see if I can switch to this other camera. Get a pretty good view. Yeah, not bad. Um, so, um, a few discoveries. Um, yesterday, you might remember, I'm gonna switch back here, sorry. It's gonna feel a little dizzy. You might remember these values were kind of all over the map. And um, not only that, but they were not behaving rationally in sequence. So, um, Suspecting that it was so irrational that there must be something a little crazy going on, um, I did some experiments, and uh, as I suspected, the little wires on the ribbon cable, the individual wires, were interacting with each other. So um, what I actually did was just um, use every other wire. Now in doing so, I did an experiment there as well. Uh, first of all, I tied all of the unused wires together, uh, that was experiment one. Secondly, I tied them together and grounded them. Um, so neither of those provided an improvement. As a matter of fact, they provided a degradation of the dynamic range that I was getting out of the sensor itself. Um, so that was number one, every other wire. And it makes sense um, that they would interact. There's no shielding between the wires or anything. Um, so uh, it makes sense that um, the way these uh, capacitive sensors work, that there will be some interaction. 
The second thing uh, I noticed, and I don't know how well you can see the code here on the right, but um, I modified the code to, to measure a baseline as soon as it opened the little board, measure a baseline, and then display instead of the raw values the difference from that baseline. This um, allowed me not to have to make that math in my head, and um, I could really see distinctly how the system was behaving. When I first did that, I noticed the first two columns were just weird, just different than the others. Instead of displaying a difference of um, like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 like you see here, um, they were actually displaying 100 or some ra uh, irrational number. So I thought, hmm, maybe when the board is initial initialized, it needs to um, stabilize. So I added a two second delay in the code in the setup, oops, sorry. I added a two second uh, delay, sorry, I tried to make that change on the, um, on the Twitch feed instead of the actual, let's see, there we go. Now if I can slide this down and you can see here is that setup loop I mentioned. The board gets opened The board gets opened here, and then um, I put this delay of two seconds, then I remember that baseline after that. So what I found is that just made uh, all of the values appear the same, and I think that was a positive change to let the board stabilize, then make the measurement. Now I'm always initializing the board with the aquarium full, because I think that's more stable than empty. Um, so the baseline is established when it's full, and then we look for it uh, to be empty. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, notice the, what you want to do is watch these values. I think I have it right, this one on this side, and I can test that with my finger. Yeah, note the big change. Um, so the far right is the top sensor. So we should see these values change from right to left in a nice predictable order. We'll start the water flowing. There we go. So, um, we're just reaching 12. There you go. So 12 changed. Pretty good dynamic range, almost like 20-something uh, points or so. Um, now we're working our way toward 11. I'll snap my finger right when it reaches 11. There we go. We're leaving 11, and you see the value on channel 11 is changing very predictably. Again, good dynamic range. So if I set the delta to 15 or 20, and watch for a change of 15 or 20 points, I'm going to have a really good idea. So now we're hitting uh, 10, just went by. I'm going to flip back to the other camera so you can get the idea of what's going on here. You see the water level moving down. We're about to reach number 9. If I flip back over, you'll see 9 is about to go. That's the um, fourth column from the right. Finally, eight. When we get to seven, the water level gets a little low, so I might have to turn it off before we actually trip that last sensor. I need to add a little more water. This is truly pretty cool. Predictable, good dynamic range, um, and it's behaving very rationally. There goes eight. This is very precise. Um, it's just when the water hits the tape that it actually changes, so that's pretty darn exciting, too. Yeah, you hear the pump starting to run out of water. I'm going to let it reach 7, see if it'll start slurping. Let's see if we can get 7. So there goes 7. All right. Don't know if we trip 7. Yeah, it looks like we did. Okay, so very cool. Um, one other thing I did um, was just basically, I made the mistake of getting too overly enthusiastic and um, just soldering the wire directly to the, this little Adafruit board. Let's see if I can grab this camera and give you a better view of that. So if you kind of go down here, you can see that board there. Um, I was soldering directly to the pads and I did that two or three times and I was afraid I was going to trash the traces on the board. So I put that header on there, soldered some little header connectors onto the ribbon cable. And notice every other wire, a little bit out of focus, but I think you can get the idea. Every other wire, so I have those spaces in between and I made sure none of the wires that I'm using for signals are touching each other. 
um, not from a point of view of like uh, conduction, but more from a point of view of influencing each other, each other's capacity. So this is really cool. It actually works. All right, um, so we're running an experiment here where um, the size of the tape was increased from two inches to four inches on one of the channels to see if that in fact gives us more signal. This is going to be the last experiment for today and then I've probably got to get on to some other other things, but you can see here, um, you might remember we had six channels uh, spaced about one and a half. Uh, starting at the top, I call that number 12 and 7 at the bottom. So right here, 3 from the bottom, easier to remember 4 from the right, it is number 9, which has a, a larger, um, a longer, twice as long uh, piece of copper tape. And what we're, what we're attempting to see is, do the, do the signal levels that you see in the bottom right, in other words, the deviation from this, which is the baseline, is the, is the deviation higher in that number 9? In other words, is our signal-to-noise ratio higher? Gives us a little bit more predictable behavior when we're trying to sense level. So I'm going to flip the switch and move the water from the right to the left. The thing to watch, I expect we'll see on 12, 11, and 10, the same signal of about 25 to 30 units. In other words, these numbers that are hovering these numbers that are hovering here in, um, you know, the minus four, five, three range go up to about, um, uh, down to about minus tw uh, 30, etc. But when we get to that fourth one, let's keep our eye on that one and see how big the signal actually ends up being. So let me flip the switch now. I'm moving the water from right to left. I'll flip back and forth in the views. So there goes channel number 12. And you can see that gives us a signal of about, we went from minus, oh, I don't know, three or four to minus 28, so that's about 25. Um, let me show you this view, and you can see we're just moving the water from right to left and marching our way down. So there goes channel 11. And you can see, yes, lo and behold, the number for channel 11 changed about that same number of units. A very nice signal, I mean, I'm, I'd be happy with that for the system. But if I can put an extra two inches of copper tape and get a way better signal, there goes number 10. So now here's the moment of truth on this number nine column here. Let's see what size signal we get uh, now with the tape twice as big. We're hovering about minus oh, seven or eight. Here we go. Passing 24. Oh, look at that. Really nice um, increase in signal probably another almost twice as much uh, as you might expect the tape is twice as long so we went from minus five or six to oh i gotta remember to turn off the uh, the pump in my excitement here there we go but you see, look at the size of that signal now the difference between the third column from the right and the fourth is significant and that's good news um, so in the final product I'll definitely increase the length of the tape. I do have about that long, four or five inches, that I can use for the sensing tape. The other thing about this, remember, we're on the outside of the aquarium here. That's the whole reason to go to all of this trouble. I can stay outside where it's dry, away from the water, and away from the dirt and scum and things on the inside. That's one last concern I have, and I'll just have to test that out via experimentation when algae and things grow on the inside of the glass, does that mess up our system? If so, I'll just keep it clean. Well, there you have it. Fun and games over the last couple days using that Adafruit Capacitive Touch Sensor Board, MPR121. Um, a little bit of an apology for the kind of jumbled nature of the various video clips that I put together here, but I thought getting the information out would be a little more important than making it a uh, artistic uh, project. So hopefully the information is valuable. As always, uh, if you like it, like. And if you really like it, um, subscribe to Basement Tech. Thanks and have a good day.